seeing the things that I tolerated in relationships versus like things in my business life that I would never tolerate is astounding to me. Why are we letting things slide? Why are we devaluing ourselves so much when it comes to yeah. love? I was evolving so fast that I wasn't taking that intentional time to like really spend time with myself, almost pausing to be like, do I like what's in my life right now? Business is supposed to be fun. Mm -hmm. Life is supposed to be fun. Relationships are supposed to be fun. I think we forget about that sometimes. Somehow I simultaneously have a wound of being too much mm -hmm. and not enough at the same time. Yep. And any ambitious woman feels that way. It's totally normal. Thank God. Women are often turned into the villain when they do what's right for them. She's selfish for doing what she needed to do for her happiness. And it's like, but why? It just doesn't matter at the end of the day. Your happiness matters. That's it. Kara, welcome back to the Powerhouse Women podcast. We're doing it right this time. Number one, in person. Number two, with champagne. Yay! Which cheers. is very on brand for Thank you. Thank you for having me. I know. I'm so excited. And me as well. Yes. So, yes. I'm so excited to have you back. I'm excited to get to drop in at this stage of life, even just all the tea we've been catching up on <laughs> before we hit record and, and get to have this conversation about like really what it feels like, what it's actually like to be an ambitious woman, which we both are, navigating relationships and love and dating and heartbreak because it is so real and it's so much different than I think I ever imagined that part of life would be because it's just been this journey I know for you and I've had my own of really allowing myself to be fully who I am and hoping that I'm loved for that. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I mean, I think we're at such an interesting time in the world because there are so many powerful women that we can look to, even just in pop culture. Mm -hmm. Look at Taylor Swift. I mean, she just dropped that album. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you're a fan, if you're a Swiftie. Oh, I'm like, how far do we want to go down the rabbit we hole? We can go just... down that rabbit hole. I can do it with a broken heart is just, I'm like, I'm every just ambitious my woman. Song. You listen to I it just, on the way here. My like. poor husband is probably like, are you okay? And I'm like, no, I am like living in this moment right now. This song explains what it feels like to be ambitious and also deal with real life behind the scenes. So yeah. Totally. And I think it's just, you know, we're, women are more powerful than ever and we're navigating relationships and men are in a different space. I mean, just by default, they've been put into a different place in the world mm. because women are not depending on them in the same way. And I think it's interesting to watch the shift and we're really at the forefront of it. So I'm navigating it on my own, but I also feel like we're setting an example for the women that are coming up yeah. after us on how to be in relationships, mm -hmm. how to really embrace yourself and also make space for love. Yeah. And we were, um, I think it was just the the podcast team and I, when we had a little break, we're talking about, I don't remember how we got on the subject of just how different it is to be alive and be a woman in this day and age. Because even if I think of my parents, especially my grandparents, you didn't leave relationships because you couldn't even own anything as a woman. Everything was dependent on that support, like that your actual security came from the relationship. Now we're in this day and age where we're in relationships, we have the kind of women that we're speaking about, we're in relationships because we choose to, but we can just as easily choose not to. Mm -hmm. And it's a very different way. And we don't have a model for what it looks like to be dating and in relationships and navigating relationships at, at, at this level. No one has really done it before or not enough people yeah. that not enough books or podcasts or resources have been created to to really help navigate. So uh, it makes me really excited for your next book, which we're going to yes. get into today. But I kind of want to start, let's just kind of stay on this theme because you have created a brand where you've been really open with your life, specifically your relationship life. So take us through if someone's kind of entering the chat and just getting to know you, your story, the woman behind all the best-selling books like Girl Code and Girl on Fire. What has your relationship life looked like and what have you <laughs> learned about yourself? Oh my gosh, it's, where do we even begin? I mean, <laughs> this is I why was, we have champagne. Yes, like I was definitely a late bloomer. So I was mm. not the girl in high school that had a million boyfriends. Like mm. 
I lost my virginity at 20 and I only did it because I just didn't want to be a 21 year old virgin virgin because I thought that was pathetic. So I was like, let me just do it and get it over with. And it was not romantic. It was horrible. It was like on the floor of some like Russian guy's apartment in Brooklyn. Like we were like listening to Nine Inch Nails. Like it was so bad. And I like I remember all he said to me was it's almost over. And I was like, oh, okay, great. Like it was bad. Thanks for letting me know. So yeah. So like, and then I had a boyfriend when I was 21 and it was like a super toxic relationship. Mm. Was with him up until I was 28. Then my my ex-husband got married and that relationship ended. And I think it ended way before we got divorced, you know, because my career began to take off and he was just in a completely different place. And we really just went to completely separate ways. And then after my divorce, I started dating. Mm. And that's what my new book is about because it's been such a journey. Yeah. Like all of a sudden I was this 40 year old woman in the beginning of COVID, by the way, I got divorced in January of 2020. Okay. Yeah. Great um, timing. Yeah. Great timing. It's like, I have the best timing for everything in life. I think just truly, but I got this divorce and I was like, okay, now I'm going to put myself out there. And it was just such a different world. I mean, apps were a big thing. Like people were in like situationships. Like I had never heard that term in my there, life. I was going to say there's like vernacular that I've never heard right before. like ghosting I'm like what yeah. does that mean yeah um and it's just been interesting and I think dating now as a woman who's really successful and like really knows what she wants seeing the things that I tolerated in relationships mm. um versus like things in my business life that I would never tolerate is mm. astounding to me and I see that among so many powerful women yeah it's like they're just kind of like accepting scraps and breadcrumbs but they would never do that when it comes to business mm. like why are we like that why are we letting things slide why are we devaluing ourselves so much when it comes to yeah. love it's an interesting conversation so give us some examples what did that like when you look back on your previous self in some of those seasons where you were starting to step into your success and now you have this contrast of how you're showing up for yourself and your business. What were some of those examples of where either you self-abandoned or you were accepting scraps? Because I think I'm asking because I think when we're in it and we're doing it, we justify it. Mm-hmm. And we're we're not oh. like at all conscious that we're doing it. I'll give you a great example. So I was dating somebody for a couple of months, probably about like eight months. And in the beginning, I remember him telling me, like, I'm just not into relationships. Like, I, you know, just getting out of a divorce. And I was like, that's cool. I get mm-hmm. that. And then I kept making excuses for things. Like, I was like, well, he, you know, he was, you know, drinking a lot and like partying and just not treating me well at all. And I was like, well, I was unhinged and crazy after my divorce. And it's just normal and it's part of the process. And then I started going on this like whole like tangent about like why we don't need to define relationships. And I was like having these philosophical like, like debates in my head. I was like, well, why does he even need to be my boyfriend? You know, and that's Mm. all that I wanted. I just wanted love. I wanted a secure, stable relationship. And I was making these excuses for his behavior and like justifying it by thinking that I was so like cutting edge that I didn't need to call my boyfriend. Right. But it was really just me like just wanting to be loved and wanting to be with somebody. And I would Mm. take whatever was available. So it's like in that moment where we find ourselves abandoning what we actually want to the point where we even convince ourselves we don't want, want it. it. Mm-hmm. I feel like I've been sharing a little bit on the podcast of this self-healing journey I've been on. Mm-hmm. I just was in this season where I didn't even realize how much I oriented myself around what other people wanted because it was genuinely coming from this place of I I love to serve. I love I love like I love that part of myself. I'm a great friend. I'm a great wife. I'm a great but no one was asking me to abandon myself. Right. Mm-hmm. No one no one was actually, because I was in healthy relationships. I yeah. am in healthy relationships. People weren't asking for that, but I didn't know who I was if I wasn't meeting someone else's need. Mm-hmm. So I had to come back to my own intuition to start to realize, wait, do I actually want that? And then am I making myself believe that I want what someone else wants in order to gain love Mm -hmm. i mean it all goes back to childhood right like i don't know what you're now learning this thank goodness i'm in therapy oh my gosh like i totally have abandonment wounds i mean my father left when i was little so like Mm -hmm. it only makes sense that i would just you know deal with things and try to smooth everything over to keep a man around because Mm -hmm. it was better than not having somebody Mm -hmm. and i never wanted to be the reason somebody left so Mm -hmm. i would just put up with things and Mm -hmm. you know accept shitty behavior because i just needed somebody there you know and my definition of a good man was i didn't have it like i didn't see good relationships in front of me so i had no idea i was like well if he's there it's better than him not being there and even Mm -hmm. though i knew logically that wasn't the truth but it's Mm -hmm. what felt good to me in the moment Mm -hmm. and that's what i'm learning so much through the journey of 
you know, investing in therapy and just reading and learning a lot about how that childhood programming takes a toll and realizing how it can actually feel more comfortable to choose the thing that's unhealthy mm -hmm. because it's all we've known. Yeah. And I think it's harder when it's like this subtle level of dysfunction, when it's not overtly something that we could categorize as like, oh, that's abusive or that's this or that. Mm -hmm. So how are you navigating dating now post-divorce as a woman who just continues to create more success? Your success hasn't stopped. It's not easy. Um, I'm getting better with every yeah. relationship for sure. In the beginning, I was just you know, I was still, I was operating at like such a low vibration when it came to love. Mm. I was like, you know, okay, well, first I went through a phase where I was like, I want to party. Can I like curse on here? Absolutely. I called it my soft whore era <laughs> because I was like, I'm not going to be a total whore. It's like a soft whore. Yes. So I was like, I can just hook up with some guys and like not really care. I like, it was channeling Samantha Jones, although it was like so not her because I was so like, I'm just not that girl, but I was trying, I know, you know, and I was like, I'm going to just like have Good. fun and know I had my first one night stand when I was 41, by the way, 41. And it was fun, but it wasn't like fulfilling. So then I yeah. immediately was like, OK, no, I want a relationship. Yeah. I'm yeah. over this. And then everyone that I met was like super intimidated by me. Like mm -hmm. I told you before, people can Google you if you're a public figure, if you've done mm -hmm. anything notable in the world. Like mm -hmm. everyone can just look up what you've done and make, you know, mm -hmm. judgments about you before meeting you. So I ran into a lot of have you seen you've seen Sex and the City, right? Mm -hmm. Obviously, a lot mm -hmm. of burgers in mm -hmm. my life, you know, a lot of men who are like not OK with it. And then, you know, I started to get into more serious relationships. And I think I've learned now to walk away faster. I think mm. that's the one thing that I've been able to realize like when there are things that I'm not OK with, like just trust myself and walk away and know that it'll be OK. And I would rather be alone than like sacrifice things that yeah. are, like my values and things that are important to me. Yeah. Yeah. What is your advice for someone who they feel so seen right now because mm -hmm. they're hearing this conversation about, yeah, it is it is challenging, especially when you're someone who if you've created success, it probably means that you know what you want. Mm -hmm. You're not necessarily looking for a relationship to take care of you financially, whatever that looks like. What is your advice as the version of you now who's sitting here? And it could just be from the place of someone who's still figuring it out as as you go. Yeah, I mean, I am still figuring it out. And that's, that's why like I call the, my dating book like the anti-advice <laughs> book. Like, don't do what I would do or do it because I've learned so much. Honestly, yeah, I think experience yeah. is our greatest teacher. I think my advice would be to just be OK with being with yourself, like yeah. truly. Like I just went through a breakup and I'm just so happy with myself. And I'm like immediately yeah. like I'm, I'm grieving it, but I'm like I've shifted the focus so much into mm -hmm. like what am I doing with mm. myself and like re re meeting myself in mm. a way and looking at and also reflecting and looking at what went wrong. Like what was my part in the relationship? I think the the thing that we always want to do is blame the other person. And mm. yeah, he definitely made mistakes and there were things that I was not happy about with him. But what role did I play mm -hmm. and how could I have changed? Could I have gone slower? You know, could I have waited a little bit before basically living with this person, you know, after like two months of dating them. Like there's definitely things that I am reflecting on that I'll do differently the next time mm -hmm. around. So mm -hmm. I think know yourself and just, it sounds so cliche, but like don't settle. Mm -hmm. You know, I think at 40, I mean, I just turned 44 and I'm like, I am would never settle at this point. You know, anything to me that's not hundred percent, like I'm mm -hmm. so happy with my life. My life is so full. So don't be afraid to have a full life without a relationship. Like if yeah. I mean, I know that I'll get into another one, but like if I never met anyone yeah. again, I would genuinely live a happy life. Yeah. And I don't think I've ever said that before. Yeah. It's interesting hearing you say that because so kind of like the mirrored perspective is I've been married 13 years and I'm on this this new part of my journey where I am meeting myself and getting to know myself and so just as much as I think that is important within a season of singleness, I'm realizing how important it is because I have grown so much to carve out more time, just even like this podcast trip to New York. I booked an extra day just just and I realize you guys, if you're hearing this and you have three kids at home and you're in a season where it doesn't look the way that I'm describing, but I've prioritized spending time getting to know me in mm -hmm. this season. Yeah. And it's the healthiest thing I can do for my marriage. It's the healthiest thing I can do for my friendships, for my business. Because I, I think I was on such a 
growth trajectory over the last six, seven years of powerhouse women that, and I don't know if you can speak to this at all. It was just going so fast and I was, I was evolving so fast that I, I wasn't taking that intentional time to like really spend time with myself, mm -hmm. even just in my own energy, you, you know, just almost pausing to be like, do I like what's in my life right now? Right. Do all of the friendships feel good? Does this direction in business feel good? I think that's where I noticed it the most was I needed to start pulling back on some things that I had said yes to in business that weren't aligned. And it came from prioritizing that time with yourself. So what advice do you have for someone who, no matter what season they're in, really struggles to do that? I think you said it best, just carving out that alone time, even if it's like a half hour in the morning to mm -hmm. go for a walk in your neighborhood. Mm -hmm. You know, it can't be a vacation for everybody, but traveling for sure for me is mm -hmm. always something that helps. And just like blocking out a lot of the noise. I've noticed mm. that like as I get older, I don't really ask people for advice. I just. Interesting. Yeah. Like I'll yeah. make a decision and then maybe discuss it with people. But I've really come to trust my intuition and to really like not care what people think if I have to let them down. Like I definitely can relate to getting involved mm. in business, you know, dealings or agreements and committing to something and feeling like, well, I just want to keep to my word and stick to my word and do this mm. thing. And I'm like, but why? Like really why? Like there's always a way to say no to something and to turn mm. around and do things differently. You only live once and I don't want to like live my life for other people. So yeah. Realizing that, like you said this actually on my podcast, I think the willingness to be misunderstood, Yeah, you know, and I think I can add to that, like the willingness to be disliked for doing what's best for you. Mm. This goes for business and relationships. You know, everybody, I think it's interesting. Women are often turned into the villain when they do what's right for them. Don't you notice that? Mm. Women so are true. often turned into the villain and it's like she's wrong for choosing herself or there's something wrong with her. She's selfish for doing what she needed mm. to do for her happiness. And it's like, but why? Like, mm. why aren't men, you know, spoken about in the same way? So mm. I think that we need to just continue to carve out the time, trust ourselves and really just block out the noise and realize like it just doesn't matter at the end of the day. Yeah. Your happiness matters. That's it. Yeah. I love that piece about even just I think for everyone to start taking little tangible action steps out of this is looking at where and how much you find yourself needing to run your decisions by other people, mm -hmm. even if it is your girlfriends. Mm -hmm. So what does your process look like, whether it's a business decision or, you know, decision to leave a relationship like you just did and you've shared a lot about what does your process look like with with yourself not outsourcing that decision to others? I don't know if it's a process as much it is as it is just getting into an energy, mm. you know, like just being yeah, that. by myself, like lighting a candle, putting on music, like really just sitting with myself mm -hmm. and listening to my body. So something that yes. was happening before my last yeah. breakup, I noticed at night my heart was like racing every single night when I was going to sleep, like especially when I was staying with him. And I'm like, the energy is off. Like something is weird here. Like, why can't I sleep? Why am I so anxious? And as soon as I came home, um, cause he lived in a different city. As soon as I came home, I just felt like so relaxed at night. I was mm. sleeping like a baby. Like I wasn't leaning on the things I was leaning on before to like rest. Like I mm. wasn't taking mm -hmm. like my Z my sequels, like my melatonin gummies. Like I was just falling asleep naturally. Yeah. But like paying attention to those like body signals, like mm. your body knows before your mind knows all mm. the time. That's so good. Cause even if I think about some of the things I started to dial back in the business was a lot of where I was showing up on Zoom calls and things that were so beautiful that we put into place during the pandemic when mm -hmm. connection is important and I wanted to prioritize that, but I was moving into a different season. And every time I had a Zoom call on my calendar, a lot of days it was several mm -hmm. effing Zoom calls back to back to back. I felt not good in my body yeah. versus like waking up now and realizing that the things that are in my calendar are things I'm excited to do yeah. and realizing that we get the choice. Yeah, we get the choice. You and know, it, like business is supposed to be fun. Mm -hmm. Life is supposed to be fun. Relationships are supposed to be fun. I think we forget about that sometimes and we get so wrapped up in who we should be mm -hmm. and, you know, what we look like to the outside world. And mm -hmm. like, are we impressing this person's parents or our parents or yeah. our clients? And it's like, if you don't feel genuinely excited, I had a moment this morning because I was, you know, in like total la la land in love, like the first half of this year, essentially. And I for not that I forgot about business, but like I kind mm -hmm. of was like on autopilot. I was mm -hmm. doing things mm -hmm. and I was working on the book, but like minimally. And I got home, I got back to New York City and I was like, 
God, I'm just so lit up. And I had a moment this morning wow. where I was hosting a call for my clients and I was just like, I feel I feel a way that I haven't felt in years, probably like I couldn't mm. wait to come here and do this podcast. I can't wait, you know, to go home tonight and like work on my book. Like, I just yeah. can't wait to do all these things. And like, what a blessing it is. But I've created it. You've created your life. We can create, you know, the shitty things that we have to do just as easily as we can create the good mm. things and the excitement. So it's truly a decision. So, so good. And like you said, I, I was having that moment of gratitude yesterday. I, I you know, had this extra day and was just spending time in my own energy, like really getting grounded for the podcast today and had this moment of, I just remember my first time ever coming to New York City and mm -hmm. it was with like the company. I used to sell carpet. Did, did you know this? So no, I did not. Anyway, that. long amazing. story long, that was like um, my first trip to New York City was was kind of connected to that world. And just I remember feeling like this little Midwest girl in the big city and realizing like, oh, I got to come here. I made this happen. Yeah. You know, I, I created this podcast. I created these relationships. Mm -hmm. I got to, you know, stay in this beautiful hotel and, you know, have the, you know, the privilege of being able to book an extra day just to spend with myself. And I think right now there's like this big conversation of obviously addressing privilege where there's privilege because there is a lot. Mm -hmm. And also channeling a little bit of Snoop Dogg. Like, I want to thank me. Yes. I want to like really acknowledge because if we're not actually grounding into like the acknowledgement of what we've created, then what is it for? Especially self-made women, right? Like we're both mm -hmm. self-made. Nobody handed mm -hmm. me anything. My dad was a drug addict, a deadbeat, left my mm -hmm. family. I dropped out of college. Like by every statistic, I should not have done what I've done, mm -hmm. you know? And I, I constantly like relish in that feeling of gratitude for myself always. Like if you would have told me, you know, that I would have created literally like a global empire from a blog called The Champagne Diet. It. Like it just sounds insane, but I say it all the time. It's coming up on 16 years, actually, this month. Wow. Since I started the blog. Cheers. Thank you. But I say it because everyone can do it. Yeah. Everyone can do it. You have to have talent, obviously, but you have to have a drive. Mm -hmm. You know, what is that saying? Um, hustle beats talent when talent doesn't hustle. Like, Ooh. how good is that? Damn. Yeah. That's some deep wisdom I can't take right there. Responsibility for we'll that. We'll find quote, but well, it's but today so good. you can. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just a messenger. So I love how in a lot of the work that you do and you really teach women how to step confidently into their voice and their stories. And, you know, whether it's through podcasting or through writing, you were sharing before we started just the conversation you were having with this group you're coaching right now about vulnerability. And this is something that like my understanding of just even how your brand has grown has been sharing a lot of yourself and your heartbreaks and your happy moments with your community. And that can feel really vulnerable, can feel really scary. Mm -hmm. What advice do you have for someone who, you know, and, and I, I almost look at it this way. I look at even my previous self where I wanted to connect more. I wanted to impact more. Yes, I also wanted the growth, but I was only willing to share certain parts of myself that I was ready to share. And so it's been this journey of realizing, oh, the more I just love myself enough to like own my mistakes, my failures, my challenges, the more other people actually can connect. Mm -hmm. So talk a little bit about that because I think it can seem, it can be like this boilerplate that's thrown out there of like, oh, just be vulnerable. But also no one really relates to the person who's just kind of like on Instagram crying yeah. and saying vulnerable post alert. Right, you exactly. Know? Well, Sorry if anyone has done that, but. Yeah, no, well, there's another quote again, not mine, but it's, um share from the scar, not the wound. Yeah. So I think it's important to process on your own time first mm -hmm. and then share the lessons. So tell the story, but then like, what did you learn from that story, right? Yeah. Like, are you truly past this? I'm obviously not publicly sharing what happened in my last relationship yet because I'm processing it still, Yeah. you know? And I know that and I'm aware of that. I let people know that I'm no longer with this person, but I didn't say why I didn't take questions. Like it's my, it's private for me for now mm -hmm. until I don't want it to be private. And that's my yeah. story to tell. So I, I would encourage people to, Take the time to really like understand what happened, grieve mm -hmm. whatever you went through, even if it was 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. You know, I think like we want to share and maybe it's something that happened in your childhood 40 years ago, however old you are, but not be afraid to share. I think, you know, what is the real fear? Mm -hmm. Like, what are you actually afraid of? Like the three people in your neighborhood mm -hmm. that you grew up with, like who may call your mom and, and say something <laughs> like, yeah, my podcast just hit 11 million downloads. And when I think Congrats. about that, thank you. And I think about that and I'm like, OK. If I don't share what I'm doing, I could literally like miss 
like impacting millions of people mm-hmm. like that's an insane thought mm-hmm. right when, and i'm worried about like so and so from like my old apartment building down the like it just doesn't even make sense so like think about the potential of like who you can help and serve and share with and you know what is your why like why are you doing mm-hmm. what you do for me it's just to make women feel less alone to make women feel empowered and if i'm holding my story back like i'm doing a disservice to myself and to them mm. i feel like i might know the answer because you said earlier about just even like tuning in with your body and how you're feeling how do you decide for yourself when and what to share it's really an intuitive feeling it's nothing yeah. that i can like like strategize you know yeah. i think that's the one thing that really there is no strategy for it yeah I'll typically draft something and read it a few times. Mm. I have a rule where I don't post anything after dark <laughs> and I don't post anything if I've had a drink. <laughs> it's Valid. Like, Let me wait until the morning, until the daylight, read it over again, see yes. how it feels, make sure we're sober. Like this one tip, don't post drunk. Like what is that like right drunk, edit sober? Like, yeah. Um, That's such great life advice. Yeah, just in general, like don't send the text, don't post the sub stack, don't post on Instagram, don't go live if yep, you're crying. Yep, yep. <laughs> You know, so because <laughs> there's a difference between being totally unhinged. Like I'm I'm telling in my new book, I'm telling the stories of being unhinged from a hinged place. At least today I'm hinged. Right. Like so, like I'm sharing yeah. the past and not sharing the real time updates. Nobody wants that. It's a yeah. mess. It's a train wreck. And then yeah. you go from wanting to be inspiring to just mm. being entertaining. Which. Right. Because then people obsess over the drama mm-hmm. instead of getting the lesson. Yep. That's exactly. so good. Exactly. So I want to hear about the new book. Yes. I'm so excited about this. I think just even in the time you and I have gotten to know each other and I loved your content that related to me at the moment when I was like this up and coming female entrepreneur and reading Girl Code and realizing, gosh, maybe my little book could you know, go worldwide or whether it was Girl on Fire, I think was our first podcast conversation. This would be so fun to like just link I it know, all in the show notes to, to have people go back. But this is just a beautiful season that you're in. And I think the way that we relate to each other, whether it's romantic relationships or otherwise, is just seems to be such a theme. I even see like the theme of female friendships coming up. So what can we expect? What ride can we expect to go on (laughs) in this new book once it releases? It's a wild one. Um, So (laughs) you know, I built my whole career around giving women advice, right? That was literally what I built my career around. Um, specifically business advice, advice for being more confident, all of the Mm. things, but it was always focused on your dreams, right? Mm. Whether that was a passion project or building a business or self-publishing, writing books, all the things. When it came to love, I always felt this way. I'm like, I'm never going to talk about love. I refuse to talk about it. I was in a marriage that was falling apart. That wasn't what I wanted it Um, to be. So I was like, who am I, you know, to talk about relationships? So I avoided it. And then I started dating after my divorce and I was like, I want to tell these stories. And like, I actually don't think that anyone is equipped to give love advice. And I really stand by that. Even experts, therapists, I know that this is like an unpopular opinion, but I just don't think that anybody knows the the experiences that you need to go through as a soul Mm. on this earth. Like no one can tell you not to go through that relationship. Like I will tell women, like, go back as many times as you need to, like text your ex as many times as you need to do it until you're over it, until you're cringing at yourself. Yeah. Until you like get burned by the fire. You're never bad enough. Right. And like Mm. you need to go through those like soul lessons. And I think love and relationships can be our biggest mirror, you know. So true. So the idea for the book was like. I knew that I wanted to tell the stories, but I was struggling because it was the first book where I wasn't giving advice. Mm. And this is why it's taken me years to write it. It's taken the longest book ever that I've ever written because I couldn't wrap my brain around the fact that somebody could get something positive from these wild stories. Mm. But as I, you know, I just kept writing and I hired a coach and a mentor and I just kept telling the stories and getting better at telling them and writing them and living them. And now that I read it back, it's almost done. I read it back and I'm like, this actually is inspiring because mm. it's number one, it's relatable. We've all been there. Mm. And again, I don't think anyone ever like masters it because love, mm. you're always dealing with another human being. Yeah. Right. You can't control another person. You can just respond to them and and grow with them and live with them. And I just think it's the most fascinating conversation. Mm. So yeah, it's kind of like the anti dating advice book and it's full of funny stories and it's it's heartwarming too. And I'm just excited. And it's called Don't Do Anything I Would Do. Yeah. Which is the perfect title. It's like a total play on like don't do anything I wouldn't do. But it's um, the perfect title. Yeah. Even just like graphically the way that you design the cover yeah. to just really like highlight that because you're right. It's the area of life. If I even think about, you know, 
<laughs> just the industry, the money that's made off of people trying to give love mm-hmm. advice and most of it with good intentions, right? But you're right. It's like my relationships, friendship and otherwise have been the biggest teachers mm-hmm. and I wouldn't change a thing. I no. really wouldn't. Even I wouldn't go back and change like the heartbreak in college. I wouldn't go back and change any of it because I wouldn't be who I am without right. those lessons. Yeah. And I think that, you know, the only one thing that I will say is just try to become self-aware. That's mm-hmm. all we can do. Just mm-hmm. become self-aware. You know, if you're going to go back and text an ex-boyfriend, if you're going to, you know, date the fuck boy, like know what you're doing. Just know what you're doing and own, own it. it. Own it. Like I fully own every single thing that I did. And the stories are yeah. crazy, but they're mine. Yeah. What label, title of the chapter you're currently in, would you say? Like that I'm writing currently? No, like that you're living. Oh, that I'm living. Yeah. What would be, if this were a chapter, what would this chapter be called? Oh my gosh. I don't, that's a good question. I don't know. I mean, I feel, I can describe it. I really, truly feel like I'm in a relationship with myself for the first time. Like, truly, like, I don't want any guy to call me. Like, I'm not going on a date. Like, I'm in my leave Men, me alone. Leave her my alone. chapter is called Leave Me Alone. <laughs> I think that's it. That's actually the best title I think I've ever I'm heard. I'm in my Leave Me Alone era. Leave Me Alone. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. I love that so much. Okay. So we'll obviously link <laughs> everything and we'll make sure that this episode airs when the book is available yes. so you can get your no hands pressure, on right? it. going to go home and write. Um, but I know, right? Like, so, you know, go, go finish the book. <laughs> um, one of the, my favorite things about you, since a self-published book was really what started all of this and the reason we're even sitting down here, you have been, for the most part, a self-published author. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of women in the community who know they have stories to share, whether that's through a podcast or a book, but I would love if you'd speak to that. I know I asked you this in a previous podcast too, but I'd love to talk about it here about just your your feelings on like the self-publishing journey because you're someone who really helped me see it in a whole different light. Yeah. So I, um, for those of you that don't know, my first book, I tried to get a book deal. This was so long ago. My God, this was like over a decade ago, 12, 13 years ago, maybe more, probably no way more, 15 years, tried to get a book deal. And I was rejected by 19 publishers because everybody, you know, had the same thing. Like she's Mm. not famous. Her writing's Mm. not good enough. It's the stories, whatever. So I decided to self-publish and I self-published my first four books and Girl Code was the one that really took off and went viral. And I sold close to 100,000 copies on my own in the first year. Which is, that is unheard of. It's insane. I don't, it's just crazy. And so yeah. thank you to everyone who bought that book and still yeah. buys that book because it just blew my mind. It was just yeah. the right time, the right book, the right message. Mm-hmm. And after that, obviously, all the publishers that rejected me, you know, came knocking on my door and I took a book deal, a double book deal with Penguin Random House. And it was a huge multiple six figure advance, all of the bells and whistles, mm-hmm. everything everybody ever wants or thinks that they want. Yeah. And they bought the rights to my next book, which became like She Owns the Place. And I hated the experience. Mm -hmm. Like, I absolutely hated it. I felt like it was just taking too long. There were too many people involved. They didn't see Mm -hmm. my vision. And I'm like such like a creative and I'm so like I own what I do. And they just weren't getting it. Like they were like putting the book like at like She Owns the Place in the business section of of Barnes & Noble. And I'm like, it's not a business book. Like they didn't get it. And I realized quickly I was just like this cog in the wheel and publishing houses have so much work to do on the way Mm. that they view publishing and view authors and branding. Anyway, all that to say, I went back to self-publishing and it was the best decision that I made. And I will continue to self-publish. I have a course on how to self-publish with my friend Amanda Francis. I mean, we really just love her book, too. Yeah. And she self-publishes. She was in the same boat. She was Mm -hmm. like getting offers from, you know, all of the different publishing houses, including mine. And we talked about it and I was like, no, don't do it. Yeah. And she has just sold so many copies and she's so happy she did it on her own. So I think, you know, it comes down to like, don't wait choose yourself, Mm -hmm. just do it. It's trial by fire. Like you're going to learn and you're going to grow. And I think every woman specifically when it comes to self-publishing deserves to keep the rights and the royalties to her book. Mm -hmm. Um, Knowing what they take (laughs) from like a like percentage is just insane to me and that they only want to work with authors who have built a platform. So if you built a platform, why wouldn't you like, what do you need them for? You know, Mm. so which huge advocate is such a parallel to the dating conversation Mm -hmm. and just everything that you stand for is really who you've been for me, who you've been, if I'm going to speak for the people, for for the women who are in your community is just that reminder that 
yeah, sometimes it's okay to like want to be chosen by someone else. And even mm-hmm. just like what you said, allowing ourselves to have that experience, like you allowed yourself to have the publishing experience so you mm-hmm. could go back to your truth. Yeah. And just that reminder that the experiences are always going to lead us back to truth if we're willing to learn yep. the lessons. Yeah. Some I learn a lot slower than others. And that's OK. Mm-hmm. You know, like there's no race. Like what are we racing for to be the perfect human being, like to ascend to this like higher like state? Yeah. Like, no, like the yeah. fun is in the mistakes, in my opinion. The fun is in the messiness. The fun is in the learning, yeah. you know, and I think as long as you're honoring yourself through the process, that's all you can do. Yeah. What are you most excited for? this next book because it's a different book for you and you're yeah. not giving advice you're sharing no. very very personal stories and yeah. on a topic you said you would never touch yeah so what are you excited about you know I think I'm just excited for people to see a different side of me and mm-hmm. to feel seen because mm-hmm. I know people are going to relate I mean I know that I've read it's an essay collection I've read so many essay collections over yeah, the years I and love books like that me too like memoir style and I just you know I know the feeling that I get when I read those books and I just want to give women the same feeling like you're not yeah. alone yeah you know if you feel like you're getting it wrong when it comes to love like we all feel that way at one point in our lives yeah. and nobody's perfect and I think you know I just I'm curious to see the reaction mm-hmm. I just I kind of feel like it could be like the biggest book that I, I put out I hope I mean yeah from like my lips to God's ears so we'll see yeah. but I really just think it's gonna it's shifting my career too mm-hmm. you know I think I'm moving into a different space which feels good to me and I feel like I'm ready like I can mm-hmm. talk about business all day and I'd love to talk about business but there's more you know I have so yeah. much more to offer and share and yeah. I think talking about this is kind of helping me expand and pivot a little bit so that's exciting yeah I can feel it. I can feel the energy of that. Yeah. And, you know, for someone who is listening to this and maybe they're like, oh, relationships, I don't think I really have anything to look at there. Who is this book really for? If you were to to just speak into the hearts of of people who might be blocking their next season of growth Mm because they're not willing to look in their relationship life or maybe their business isn't growing the way that they want because there's actually something to be learned in their love life. Yeah. What would you say? Who is this really for? I mean, I think it's for any woman who feels like she's getting it wrong when it comes to love, whether you're in a relationship or you're single Mm -hmm. or you're dating Mm -hmm. or somewhere in between. Um, It's for any woman who second guesses herself, who feels Mm -hmm. like she's too much, but also feels like Mm -hmm. maybe she's not enough. I was just saying that earlier. I was like, somehow I simultaneously have a wound of being too much mm-hmm. and not enough at the same time. Yep, we all do. Just pick and, the day. And, and any ambitious woman feels that way. It's totally normal. Thank God. <laughs> yeah. And I, I, you know, it's for the woman who's like, like, why can't I get this one thing right? Mm. You know, like everything mm-hmm. else looks good. Like I've got mm-hmm. a high credit score. I've got a great business. I own a home. Like, but why can't I figure it out when it comes to love? And, you know, again, even if you are in a relationship that's happy, like I subscribe <laughs> This is going to sound like really crazy, but like, I don't think there's like one person for everyone. I mm. really, mm-hmm. God bless mm-hmm. every married couple. I want them to last forever. But I yeah. think, you know, a lot of people like wind up having different seasons of love. And mm. I think if you can be open to that mm. and realize that relationships run their course and it's OK if it runs its course and there's so much more out there for us to mm-hmm. learn and live through, you know, if you're especially women, I think. I think the subcategory of women that this book is for are the women who are maybe married or in long term relationships and have like an inkling that maybe it's not right. Uh, And, you know, like it's I think it just opens up another world and another realm of possibilities. And it's okay, You know, Mm. I'm divorced. And I think that's I'm so happy that I'm divorced because I get to write a book from that perspective. And you're right. There can be like so much stigma and shame Mm -hmm. around that word alone. Mm -hmm. Guilt. Exactly. And. You know, when I think about even the parallels to business, right, the shame, the guilt around like making a pivot, making a decision to end something that was once for you that Mm -hmm. isn't for you anymore. Mm -hmm. It's so important that we share our stories from the perspective of someone who has been through it to normalize that pivot season. Normalize changing your mind. Mm -hmm. Why are we so afraid to change our minds? Like, why Mm -hmm. do we feel like we have to pick this one thing, partner, job, hair color, hair length, whatever, forever, like normalize changing your mind without permission and without apology like that's that's a mic drop moment right there these mics are expensive so we won't (laughs) drop them but okay so tell everybody where they can find you where they can follow along because you you're doing some incredible work at least for this season right i'm like we'll just we'll (laughs) say for right now um helping women who want to self-publish helping women who want to launch podcasts which is really all under this 
theme of really owning your story. So for people yeah. who just want to connect with you as the human being and, and whatever it is that you want to sell us yeah, next, I mean, I think where's right the best now, place? Yeah, I think right now I just I want to help women amplify their voices in yeah. whatever what, whatever yeah. that looks like, whether it's amplifying your voice in your relationship or yeah. on your podcast or in a book. So Instagram, obviously, I'm at The Champagne Diet. My blog, I can link that for you. It's the Substack blog. Definitely read the blog if you kind of want the inside scoop of like say, the dating stuff. Chapter one is available on Substack, it's right? On Substack now. I have it yeah. pulled up on my laptop and I just yeah. remembered as we were talking that I didn't, I was going to read it in preparation, but I'm kind of excited to read it yeah. post yeah. interview. Yeah. The first it's, chapter. Yeah. The first chapter is on there. And then all my books are on Amazon yeah. and my podcast is on everywhere you listen to podcasts. Style your mind. Style your mind. Yeah. yeah. And we did an amazing, that was such a fun conversation, really talking about style and growth yeah. and evolution. Yeah. That was so much fun. Yeah. Okay, so you've answered this question before because you've been on the podcast before, but it's really so cool, especially for the women who I've known for a while and have I've just watched them evolve to get a pulse check on what they're really proud of themselves for. It's mm -hmm. just what we call your powerhouse moment. It's just something mm. big or small that you want to pause and like have that Snoop Dogg moment of yeah. thanking yourself, acknowledging yourself for. So if I ask what's a recent powerhouse moment that you want to celebrate, what's the first thing that comes to your mind uh, I think walking away from my last relationship yeah for sure yeah. It's so hard to walk away when you're in love with somebody I mean I walked away while I was in love with someone it's yeah. one of the hardest things you can do but yeah I chose myself and I'll never regret that mm. so well said I'm so grateful for you I'm, I'm grateful, so grateful for, for your you. example Aww. and just really to be on a journey with someone who's so committed to their own evolution and choosing themselves above everything else Lindsay, I love you. I love you too. <laughs>